finally. That's got to blow an exhaust, hasn't it? Yeah. Right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, we've hit a big milestone. We're now at 200,000 subscribers, which is just mind blowing. When I started this channel back in September 2018, I never imagined we'd be at 200,000 subscribers within four years. So thank you to each and every one of you for subscribing and watching and commenting. I really appreciate it. This is something that just started out as a hobby and it's now spiraled. So I really do appreciate your support. So today I thought I'd do a quick Q&A video. Right, the first question then is from Mr. B, who said, apart from the snip, what would you go for if you had five kids? I love the look of the Discovery 3 you currently have for sale, but I'm not sure if I'm ready to make a sixth financially ruinous decision yet. That's a good point, to be fair. Um, what would I go for? You don't want something like a people carrier, because they're sad. If you don't want something as risky as a Discovery, perhaps something like a, a Kia Sorento? That wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, they're good cars, actually. A Kia Sorento, try and go for something like a 2014 onwards, seven-seat automatic. Go for something like a KX3 or KX4 and it has heated leather seats, sunroof, all that stuff. Alex Smith has asked, cars are getting better made all the time. Do you see an optimum age band for car ownership? An old friend used to say, buy at two, sell at five, but this seems too limited now as you hardly ever see broken down or rusty cars. That's a good point. I think even five-year-old cars are still new and got loads of life left in them. So I would say, it depends really, it depends on the brand as well. If you're looking at something cheaper and French like a Renault Clio or a Peugeot, you don't want to buy a 15 year old one. Um, but if it was a 15 year old Mercedes or BMW, then you've got half a chance. So it really depends on the brand, I would say. Next one, Kit Buster has asked, honest opinion, 2015 Audi A5 Coupe S-Line TDI Quattro. I've spent around two and a half grand making it right, including a DSG service, bumper and bonnet respray, new AC compressor, brakes, discs all around. The car is now A1, do I keep it or get rid? Um, the trouble is if you get rid, you're gonna have to buy something else, aren't you, basically? So unless you've got something in mind or something lined up, then I'd just keep it. It sounds like you've got it back to A1 condition, so I'd, I'd keep it. The Car Soul has asked, what are your opinions on US car dealers? I watched some flying wheels on YouTube and it seems like a very different game with far more rattle canning, poor rust repairs, on a huge mileage, pricey old tat. It's a totally different car market. I've got a little bit of experience with that from a few months that I spent in California and you can't buy anything less for less than $2,000 or you couldn't 10 years ago. People are always looking for cars, so even old, really old stuff um, still holds its, still holds their values. I remember going out car shopping with a few friends of mine who didn't have much money at the time and we were looking at old stuff like mid 80s Toyota Corollas and Civics and things like Accords and things like that. Things here that would have been scrapped 10 years ago that were still on the road and still asking two and a half thousand dollars for them and they'd done 300,000 miles. So it is a totally different market. Visions in blue, will you be buying any more hot hatches seeing how you seem to like them? Um, never say never. James Lloyd Cole has asked, I know you hate remapping, but for example, a BMW 640D, it maps safely and gives unbelievable performance for the economy. Do you not see the appeal? Those types of cars and big V8 diesels are fantastic. No, yeah, on a one liter EcoBoost with a baby turbo, of course, steer clear. That's my opinion, really. If you're, just trying to, if you're just trying to remap it to get a bit more economy out of it, then I would say go for it. I still don't like the idea of it because I think if a manufacturer could have done that, they would have done that from the factory. Um, but on something like a 640D, I think it could take it. But on smaller cars, I don't like the idea of it at all. Rasant Chatsi has asked, what do you think about the Mark 1 Chrysler 300C? I personally love the look of it and I'm seriously considering getting one. Any advice? I loved them when they came out. I had one. I had a 2005 3.5 V6. It was originally from Texas. It was left-hand drive. And loved it for about three weeks and then I hated it. A really cheap, plasticky interior. Uh, it, was, it was a cheap car. Well, they're cheap cars, aren't they? So you can't expect Bentley quality, even though they kind of look like a Bentley to somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, they are great value though, and I think they'll be a future classic. It's, it's, it's design is square enough to look appealing in 10 or 20 years time. I would say the diesels are pretty good actually, it's a 3 litre CRD. Uh, yeah, go for it. Maybe if you can afford to run it, go for a Hemi, because I think they'll be, they'll be future classics without a doubt. Mank Matt has asked, what are your thoughts on the Lexus LS400? A possible review perhaps. Um, I've never had one. I've had several LS430s and 460s 
600 H's, but I've never had a 400. So possibly, I'll try and try and find one and do a video with it. Wizzer has asked, what's the bread and butter cars of this day and age, Matt? Great to see comparisons of the 90s, 2000s and 2010s. Back in the day, it was only 995cc Fiestas, Golfs, Diesel Estates. The kinds of cars I sell, that's still my bread and butter, really. Um, seven, eight-year-old Ford Focuses, seven, eight-year-old Fiestas, Kia Seeds, that sort of thing. It sells day in, day out, and that's, that's what I prefer to stock. Johnny1970 has asked, given the cost of fuel at the moment, do you see second-hand prices for electric and hybrid cars going up? Um, I always struggle, I've said this in many other Q&A videos, but I always struggle to sell hybrids and electric cars. They always seem to root themselves to the forecourt and have them for months and months. So, no, I haven't noticed them increasing in value. I think people are still frightened of them, which is mad because they've been around for 20 years now. CS has asked, as someone who sees what cars are like after some use, what's a car brand that doesn't deserve a bad reputation, or conversely one that doesn't deserve its good reputation? Hmm. That's a good question, really. This is why I've got my opinion um, that I have today, that there are no, really, there are no brands better than one another. It all depends on how they've been maintained, how they've been looked after, how they've been treated. Of course, you've got a better chance with some brands, but it really boils down to the servicing and how it's been driven. There's an awful lot of bias with some brands, though. So, especially Japanese brands, people think that Hondas and Toyotas never go wrong, and they do. And equally, people think that Range Rovers, Land Rovers, Porsches and stuff, always break, and that's not true either. So, yeah, there's a lot of bias, really. Paul Rhodes has said, you're brave putting this up. I'm tempted to spam with random questions. Fire away, Paul. The Volkswagen Media Video Effects has asked, what's your opinion on Volkswagens nowadays? Um, it's, I suppose my opinion of them is the same as it's always been. They're kind of safe, sensible, boring cars, really, for the masses. They seem to be only making SUVs though, which is a bit strange. I know that's, that's the way the market's going, I suppose, but I was behind something the other day, Tygo or something? I'd never even heard of it or seen one. I guess it, it looked like a, a jumped up Polo. So they do that, the T-Rock, the T-Cross, I don't know, I've lost track, I've lost interest really. They're all about as dull as one another. I can see a day in the very near future where they don't make the Golf anymore though, or the Passat. The Manipulator One has asked, do you think it's a shame that Lexus has dropped the IS? Is there now a gap at the bottom of the Lexus range for those who don't want a crossover? To be honest with you, I didn't know that they had dropped the, Ella, uh, the IS. Because I only sell used cars, I'm not that clued up with what's going on in the, the new car world. So I didn't know they dropped it, which is a shame because the IS is a good car. I've had loads of those. Yes, it is. I guess it's all just based on market research, isn't it? Everybody seems to want a small SUV these days, but yeah, certainly. I think Lexus would sell more cars if they had a wider range. That's always been their problem. Tom Pearson has asked, all things being equal, which is best? Mercedes C220 diesel, BMW 320D, or Audi A4 2 liter TFSI? Um, it depends what you want. I'd say definitely not the Audi. So it depends between the BMW and Mercedes if you want something that's sporty to drive or something that's a bit more comfortable. The Mercedes might be a tad more reliable. I'd probably go with the BMW. Kizar Ahmed has asked, hi Matt, which car would you say is the best used car for under 30K besides a Range Rover? Um, something like, Something like an Audi A7 or Audi A8 or BMW 6 Series or 5 Series or a CLS. I'd have any one of those. So yeah, that's what I would buy besides a Range Rover. Or an X5. We've got one in stock actually. I'm not trying to plug it, but that's, I would buy one of those. It's 26 grand or something. Really good color, three liter diesel, and they drive really well. Um, right, next question. Reese Collison has asked, what car do you sell that tends to get the most interest and sells the quickest. This is a bit of an odd one now, because I think they look overpriced for what they are, but the Mark II Focus, if you get a ZTEC S or a Titanium, they're always, they're always the same money as lower spec Mark III Focuses, so I always think they look ridiculously expensive, but they always sell really quickly. So that's the first thing that springs to mind. I Huss has asked, what's the most economical car to run in the 3K range? I've done a video on this recently, so you might want to check that out. But some kind of older diesel, some sort of Golf diesel, Passat diesel, something like that, or something small and light, something like a Suzuki Alto or a Yaris or an Igo. They're not the most exciting cars, but certainly the cheapest to run. Gift 16 has asked, assuming the market returns to something like it was, would you ever consider buying a new car? It depends on my finances. I'd love to buy a new car. It, I think everyone would love to buy a new car. It all boils down to cost and whether they can afford to do it or not. I always think it's a, a waste of money, but if I could do it through a business or something, or you know, if it was tax efficient, or you know, there are loads of different factors, then yeah, I'd love to. 
Ken Pallister has asked, if you could electrify any classic or modern classic, what would you choose? Straight away, I'm thinking old SL, something like a 1960s one with a pagoda top. I think that would make a really good EV. Or the 80s SL. Um, yeah, so one of those. Gruppenführer has asked, what car brands would you love to have back in the UK? Saab, Lancia, Triumph. It's a shame, really, that, that they've gone, all the three that you've mentioned, really. I was never a big fan of Rover, but it would be interesting to see if Rover, re if Rover relaunched today, what they would do, perhaps. Um, MG have relaunched and they just make electric SUVs, so it probably would be a similar sort of path. But yeah, certainly Saab, because I'm a big Saab fan. Cal Electrical Limited has asked, could you do some more awkward customer stories as that video was great? And what are the future plans for High Peak? Um, I'll definitely do some awkward customer videos. I always get a few, a few negative comments from people who think that I'm just slating my customers, and I'm really not. But some of those stories just needed to be shared. And as for the future of High Peak, I'm not too sure. There are lots of different directions, lots of different opportunities, really. Um, I've still got the clothing brand, which I'm trying to grow and develop. Um, I'll leave the link below to, to that so you can have a look. It's a tricky one because I could go in many different directions with it. I could either expand the whole sort of garage or set up another location somewhere else, but it would take a lot of work and a lot of money. So I don't know, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm open to ideas really, so, and I'm always working, always trying to think of different ways of earning more money basically and trying to grow and improve. So something will happen, without a doubt. Right, well that's the YouTube questions answered. I also posted this on my Instagram, so if you haven't followed me on Instagram, check it out, it's at Autos. So, I'll start to go through some of those questions. JL89 has asked what am I wearing? That's a bit of a, bit of a weird one. Um, Eric has asked, is it worth investing into a car dealership business? I'm gonna say yes answer because that's my line of work. I still think there's a lot of money to be earned at this, in this industry, and it's quite easy to set up. Um, I've mentioned this in other Q&A videos, but if you're setting up a shop or a restaurant, it takes a lot of investment before you even, before you sell your first meal or sell your first item. Whereas with this, you've still got these cars. Um, so whatever you buy, you've still got them. If it all goes wrong, you've still got those cars that you can sell, even if it's at a slight loss. You're not gonna, you're not gonna go backwards too, too much. Whereas with any other line of um, business, I think you would. Why 2 James 99 has asked, with fuel prices being so high, does this affect gas guzzlers? And is it a good time to buy one? I've noticed no difference. Uh, um, you would think so, wouldn't you? You'd think everybody would be offloading the big V8s and stuff, but that isn't the case. I think people that could afford to buy them in the first place can still afford to run them now. They just, it's just costing them a bit more. So no, there's no, there's no real drop in price there. Our Holt 85 has asked, what's your absolute dream car? What spec or trim is it and what color? My dream car, I've mentioned this again before, is a BMW Z8. I'd love a Z8. I'd also love a 1960s SL, because I think they're the coolest cars on the road. They're the first two that spring to mind. I'd be quite happy with those two. KK Explores has asked, are you considering doing any more collaborations with other YouTubers? Love the channel. Thanks. Um, I haven't got any planned, but I'm always, I'm always open to ideas. Something with maybe like Car Throttle would be a good one where they're always doing things where they buy cheap cars and stuff. That might be an opportunity for me to sell them a cheap car. Right, next one. Sean Simo, love the channel, boss content. Do you think private number plates are a good investment? It depends. I think they are personally, but it, it depends. They're, they're difficult to offload. Um, I think they increase in value, but they are difficult to sell. So if you're in a pinch, I don't think it's something that you could liquidate quickly. So that's one thing to bear in mind. James Wilkinson has asked, as your channel has grown, are you happy with the YouTube garage balance? Yeah, that's something that I'm gonna to have to address in the near future really, because no, it's too much really. I work here five days a week and then I do the YouTube thing at the weekend, so I don't really have a day off. That's something that will have to change in the near future if it continues to grow at this rate. Pompupert, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, has asked, BMW 640i Gran Turismo, 2019, 15,000 miles on the clock, at BMW Northampton dealer, bad idea. No, I think that's a good idea, a, a good idea. Thomas Matthews, I've got around £22,000 to spend, X5 or KN V6. Hmm, I would say KN actually. I love the X5, but I think you'd have to spend 25, 26, 30 to get a really nice one. Whereas the KN's that shape, they made them a few years earlier. I'd say KN, KN. TW19 has asked, MGTF or Mark II MX5? I'd say Mark II MX5, be more reliable, but probably rustier. 
I don't like the TF. Don't like the TF at all. Looks good, but it's a big disappointment. So yeah, MX-5. Fidano has asked, what are your thoughts on premium small SUVs such as the X1? Don't really like the X1. Q3 or the GLA? The GLA is all right, I'm not a huge fan. I'd probably out of those three go with the Q3. At least they, they drive well. Um, I'm not a huge fan. I think you're better off going for the slightly bigger ones, the X3, the Q5 or the, the GLC. Matthew underscore zero has asked, why did you start YouTube and a used car dealer? I've always bought and sold cars, so I've just always been involved in cars, even when I was at college, just buying cheap cars and trying to put some value into them and then selling them for profit. But YouTube, I started four years ago, just as a hobby, really. Um, I got so bored and fed up with the, the car job, doing it every single day, that I needed something to occupy my mind. I'm quite a creative person, so... I just thought I'd get a camera and go and talk about common issues with cars, and then it's just sort of spiral from there. So yeah, it was just a hobby, basically. Dennis Mihoff Strength, I'm sorry if I've pronounced that wrong. Would you say that the Continental Mark II are the all-round best bang for your buck GT cars? Without a doubt. I think they're great value for money. I much prefer it over the Mark I. Um, looks better. The interior is nicer. You've got two cup holders. Yeah, I definitely... I can't think of anything better, to be honest. You could say something like an XKR, which is even cheaper, but it's not got the same sort of premium feel as a Continental. The Continentals are just something else. Brando Arc, apologies if I've said that wrong. If you were not in the auto trading business, what would you imagine your life to be? Um, I'd be a lot less stressed, I suppose. I don't know what I'd do. I honestly don't know what I'd do. This was always an issue for me because uh, I was always good in school. I always got good grades and everything, but I just didn't know which direction to go in. So. I just kind of followed cars because it was my hobby and passion, really. So to answer your question, I don't know, I honestly don't know what I'd do. It's something that I've given a great deal of thought to and I, I honestly don't know. It would have to be something that would allow me to be creative, but I also like the business side of it as well. So, I don't know, I'm not sure. Joe Patrick Den has asked, what's the actual process to becoming a car dealer? Is there too much red tape to turn a profit? In the UK, there's almost no red tape at all. We're really lucky in this country. You could just pretty much start once you've got your insurance in place, there's not an awful else um, to consider. Whereas in other countries, I know in the US, in certain states, in most states, I think you need a, a dealer's license and stuff. You don't need that here. The same guy's also asked, for somebody potentially looking at becoming a car dealer, what vehicles would you start out with? Personally, I'd start small. I'd start with cheap stuff because that will sell day in, day out. That's how exactly how I started. Um, I started off with 15,000 pounds and just bought as many cheap cars as I possibly could. Things like little Igos, Yaris's, Citroen C1s, boring stuff, but they're cheap to buy, there's still a profit margin in them, and they're cheap to repair. I wouldn't start out too ambitious because you're just gonna crash and burn, I think. Juan Grimes has asked, suggestions for reliable, comfortable estate car, about 12 to, 10 to 12,000 pounds to play with, thanks, John. Um, straight away, I'd say something like a, a BMW 320 diesel estate or 530 diesel estate, you, you can't go wrong with any of them, really. An E-Class, if you want something more comfortable. Audi A6. If you want something smaller, then something like, say, at Leon Estates, they're very good. Yeah, something like that, then. Sam Woodhouse has asked, do you buy from auctions? If so, uh, or, or not, why not? No, I don't. I just don't like the idea of it, to be honest. And to be honest, I'm also quite lucky in that I've got a good contact um, who buys directly from main dealers, so I just buy them from him. And also, I buy quite a few from YouTube viewers who get in touch with the cars that they, they don't want the hassle of selling. So, fortunately, I don't have to. Oliver Christie 06 has asked, why don't you like French cars? I've just had so many bad experiences with them. They're poorly built, poorly made, they're not particularly fun to drive. I just, I don't think they've got anything going for them. The only time they do is when they're quirky. Something like a Citroen um, Cactus, C4 Cactus, whatever. There are, there are odd cars like that that I quite like. But for me, French cars are only good when they're, when they're quirky. Something like a Peugeot RCZ, Citroen Cactus. When they try and make a, a sensible sober car, I just think they, they fail. And you may as well buy something else. So I'd, I'd, never, I'd never buy one for myself unless it was a quirky one. Oliver Spratt has asked, what alternatives were you considering to the AMG GTS? All sorts of stuff. Um, Mark II Continental, um, 911, uh, what else? The Lexus LC, an older R8 all sorts of stuff. For that kind of budget and for that kind of car, there's an awful lot of choice. The real Sasha Tromza has asked, I've got one, have you ever owned an electric car? Would you consider it? What would it be? Um, yeah, 
If I could afford it, I'd have a Porsche Taycan because I think they're beautiful, uh, especially the Turismo model. Um, what else? I have had a, a, a Fiat 500 electric, which I imported from California, and I, I love that little thing. But on older electric cars like that, the range is quite poor. 80 or 100 miles isn't really enough in the real world, unless you're just using it like I did to pop to the shops in. So yes, I'd have a Porsche Taycan to answer your question. I also quite like the look of some of the Polestars, the Volvo Polestars, but I don't know whether I'd buy one with my own money. Steve Pryke has asked, hi, the best £2,000 large auto as a runaround. You're going to struggle to get a decent automatic for two grand uh, unless you go with a big petrol engine, something like an old Volvo V70, something like that, you could get, you get a decent one for a couple of grand. Or a Saab 9.3, they're decent. Yeah, one of those two. In fact, you could get a 9.3 Estate, go for an aero model, something like that. Jay Silver EP3 has asked, do you sell High Peak Pine flavoured vapist oil? Asking for an ST friend. No, I don't, but that's certainly something I could look into in the future. Connor Molden has asked, hi Matt, I'm 19 and I've thought of going into car sales in a showroom. Any advice? Keep up the good work. You need to build up some experience, really. So by getting a job in a showroom, at least you'll have some experience, won't you? If you did that for a year or two, you'd realise whether you actually like the job or not. So yeah. Go for it. Mr. Jay Swinnerton has asked, if you could leave the wheeling and dealing in the car game, would you? Most days, yes. There are some days that I still enjoy it, but it's an awful lot of work. Um, most of the time I don't enjoy it, truth be told. I don't know, I think I'm, there's only, I've, only got a, I've only got so much time in a week. So I think eventually I'm just gonna run out of time really with other projects that I've got on the go to focus enough on this because it is a really time consuming job. So I'm not sure. Beardy B has asked, Range Rover Classic, L322, L405 or L460? The P38 doesn't count. I love the P38, I've been looking at them recently. I'm really tempted to get one, but I don't know what I'd use it for. I'd just park it in the showroom and stare at it from a desk. I would say the L405, I think that's the best one. The L460s, I've still not, I'm still not made up my mind about the, the appearance. The L322 is a really good Range Rover, but it's, it's not as luxurious as the L405. So I would say a facelift L405 from 15 onwards. Jakob T1 has asked, first three cars you owned, Ford Focus 1.8 ZTEC, Ford Focus 1.6 gear, automatic, with height adjustable driver's seat. And the third was a, don't laugh now, it was a Chrysler, 3, uh, Chrysler PT Cruiser, two litre touring. Alex Satelic has asked, what was the moment that, my Lex has just gone off there. I'm not sure. What was the moment that started your love for cars? I'm not sure, that's difficult to pinpoint. My dad's always been into cars, so I think his love for cars has kind of, um, you know, brushed off on me. So I've just always been into cars, always. And I find it really easy to remember nerdy facts about cars. I know them without even, even trying to remember them. John C101 has asked, Volvo V90 or Audi A7? I'm trying to decide which one to get. I filmed with a V90 today. They're great cars. Uh, there's just something a little bit too sensible still about the Volvo, as great as it is. So me being me, I would have the Audi A7, even though I know that technically the Volvo is better. Doesn't make sense, does it? But hopefully that's helped. Amitos Burritos has asked, what's the worst car you've ever bought? There are so many. There are so many cars that I buy that are main dealer part exchanges that that needs so much work that I end up doing and then just selling for money back or a slight loss. One that springs to mind, I've actually got in stock, it's a Citroen C3 and I've spent about two and a half grand on that. Bear in mind it's only on at four and a half grand. I'll be lucky to get my money back on that. I bought it, it had a cracked windscreen and it had one of those panoramic windscreens that wraps around the roof. That was like 350 or 400 pounds. Then I spent another £1,400 at my mechanics on disc pads, engine light was on, all sorts of stuff. Then it needed a bit of paint work. That's probably the one that springs to mind anyway. But there are loads, hundreds, hundreds. Ben Brads, are there certain makes of models of car that attract more problematic or demanding purchases? Yeah, usually things like, things like Skoda Yetis and Skoda Superbs. They're bought by older people generally that are like connoisseurs and they go over them with a fine tooth comb. Things like that. Jimmy Hibbs has asked, not asking for numbers, but does YouTube pay? Yes and no. I've been doing this for four years now. For the first year or so, it didn't pay at all. And then more recently, it started to pay um, a decent amount of money. So 
So if you spread that over the four years and all the hours and hours of editing and filming and all that sort of stuff, plus the camera gear, plus everything else, there's still money in it, don't get me wrong, but it, it's not as easy as just starting a channel and earning money from it from you know day one. It doesn't really work like that. You've got to, you've got to build it up like any business, really. And the most profitable thing, really, is when you do sponsored videos. So I work with several sponsors regularly, um, and that pays well. But the actual YouTube revenue isn't that brilliant, especially if you divide it um, over the, the years that I've done it and the 300 videos that I've done. AJ Horrocks has asked, do you run your place in Spain as an Airbnb? Um, firstly, it isn't my place in Spain, it's my parents' place in Spain. I used to, but it just got too much, too much aggravation, too much stress. Then they changed the laws in Spain, so you needed things like, um, you need to go to the town hall with the occupants, every single guest's passport copies and pay a fee and all that sort of stuff. And then you've got to get, um, quite rightly I suppose, you've got to get fire extinguishers in there and safety things and all that sort of stuff. So it isn't as easy as it used to be. So no, I don't, I don't bother with it anymore. It's too much aggravation. Well, I think that's about it. So thank you to everyone who's asked a question. Hopefully I answered you. And yeah, thank you for watching as always. And thank you for getting me to 200,000 subscribers. Cheers guys, I'll see you next time.